I have friends who are like huge fans of Dr. Dave Show. Uh-oh. Like I've met random people on hikes in Scotland who just like talked up your podcast that random in conversation. So, How does it come up? You you know the usual thing where people are like, "What podcast are you listening to?" When oh. Dr. Game Show. Well, you know, Kyle, there's like that thing where you're like, "My friend has a problem," but you're really talking about yourself. But I do think in this case you are talking about your friends. So that's but that's good. <laughs> Kyle Marion, who is a former physical anthropologist turned comedian, producer, and science journalist. She produces New York City's Filipino Comedy Festival and the Symposium Academic Stand-Up, which features dirty comedians alongside academics and researchers. She's trained to translate their research into comedy. Kyle, we're so glad you're here. Welcome. Are you a competitive person? Do you like to play games or are you like anti-game? Oh, I, I love games. I am competitive, but Growing older, I realized the worst game I've ever played is Catan because I always lose. So I've devised a plan where even in any game that I play, I make up my own rules. So I always win, even when I lose. So that's how competitive I am. Okay, perfect. So Kyle, you might be playing against some of these people we have on the show today. Well, every game is climate themed and perhaps we'll fix the earth. Manolo, how are you doing? Uh, I was in the middle of, of eating chicken. <laughs> you were eating chicken in the morning? Yeah, I mean, it's lunch for us now. Oh, yeah. Because I'm in a different part of the earth. And does the curvature of the earth have to do with time? Is this a question for Kyle? Kyle, science. Time zones, for sure. I think time just affects everything (laughs) in general. So you can't get away from that. That is true. Listen, if that doesn't resolve your issues, I don't know what will, Manolo. So that, I feel like that, yeah. So you just ate some chicken and now you're back. I also, in the meantime, while I was eating chicken, I learned a climate fact. So you know how people who don't think that humans affect climate, but they do, and that 17 of the warmest years out of 18 started since 2001. It's all in cycles, but the Industrial Revolution has uh, rapidly increased the carbon dioxide in the air, and turns out that I could eat chicken without warming it. Oh, okay. That's where that story was going. Okay, great. Yeah. Okay. Um, also, the warming of leftover chicken is also man-made. All right. I don't think I understand that sentence, but le- that's great. We are, we're going to keep that in mind, and I'll think about that for years to come. Mm-hmm. So we're going to play three games submitted by listeners, and then we will vote on a winner. Kyle, do you sing? Yes, but in terms of Filipino singing, I am probably more of a backup choir person. What is Filipino singing? I think it's just winning competitions and singing. That's what Filipino singing is. It doesn't matter if you're like at somebody else's birthday party. It's also a competition for singing. So that is the traditional Filipino singing. Do you find that the judgment is like how accurate you are at imitating a famous person? I think that is the actual bar. I notice that after a few uh, drinks, I'll sound closer to Frank Sinatra. I once said I sounded just like Beyonce. (laughs) Okay, well, I did ask for a reason, which is that we do theme songs. We have three games, and each game deserves its own theme song. So if you'd like to sing along with Manolo, you're welcome to, but you don't have to. So this first game we're playing is called Dr. Lorax Cohort, submitted by Roxanne Harvey from Los Angeles, California. All right. Oh, Dr. Lorax and Dr. Lorax cohorts. Uh, he's the guy with the trees, right? And the bushy mustache. That was really nice. Felt like the campfire again. That's an old union song. Kyle, I noticed you did not sing along. I, I'm more in a scatting mood. And okay. when Manolo started with the lyrics, I was like, I don't want to overshadow that. So 
I understand. So maybe maybe Manolo write the next one for scatting, okay? Okay, I'll do some hardcore jazz. I think that'll be better for Kyle. Thank you. Okay, so here's what Roxanne writes. We all know the Lorax. He speaks for the trees. But what about the rest of the environment? Come up with a fictional creature who speaks for other aspects of nature using the Lorax template. Examples. I am the thorax. I speak for the bees. I am the petrochorax. I speak for precipitation. Describe what your creature looks like and who would play them in an animated film. Wow, there's a lot of stuff to do here. If Joe or Manola thinks this character has legs, they greenlight the franchise. Losers must donate to a nature fund. So we have to come up with a pitch deck, and if not, then we have to give money. Yeah, it seems like it. A thor. Oh, one second. Sorry. It's okay. It's I okay. thought since it's a climate change show, I would place myself recording at a higher level than the sea level. Oh, where are you? I, I, I'm at the Midtown, the Midtown Library, you know, pretty much dead center on the island of Manhattan, far away from a coastline where, <laughs> uh, where water can rise. So, and be safe. Have you looked that up? Like if your neighborhood is prone to going underwater in like 10 years? Oh, yeah. There's like maps oh, yeah. where you see how much it goes underwater. Where I used to work, um, one of the science teachers we collaborated with created a lesson plan so that uh, middle school students and high school students can learn about uh, real estate development in the times of sea level rise. So what I think that... the future will be prepared. What does that mean? Like building office buildings on boats? No, it's. It's essentially teaching them to think like a real estate developer and like assessing whether or not the plot of land where they plan to like build a home is at risk with sea level rise. It's like a heavy duty plan. I would be so impressed if you know, a 10 year old, 12 year old is able to <laughs> tell me where to where to invest my money in the future. I'd love that. Yeah. Imagine a 10 year old telling you not to buy that mansion in Miami. I'm Sorry. back. Just talking about sea levels. Okay, that makes sense. And real estate. We're all going to buy beachfront properties. Is that the plan? Yeah, and it's yeah. all going to be brokered by 10-year-olds. Okay, great. Mine's going to be made of Roblox. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very resilient. Yeah. Thank you. I felt like that was a renewable resource. So let's talk to some people. Let's talk to Nick in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Nick. Hello. Hi, Nick. How are you? It's a good Saturday. Really? I'd say so. It's nice outside. I even had my window open, which is kind of frightening, actually. It's been too warm, you could say, this winter. Speaking of climate change. Has the snow been intense or is it just as chill as today? There has been almost no snow. There's been like snow twice. Uh Uh-oh. And that was it. And you work for a steam company? What's that mean? Like a uh, steam equipment. Uh-huh. So like, uh, you know, the industrial revolution. Sure. Well, the steam stuff is still around. What does steam do other than help exfoliate or what's the application? <laughs> so you could use it um, like a lot of industrial places. Like if you're um, cooking beans, if you, you've got a big canning plant, right? And you're cooking that's beans, you're using steam. Uh, you could be in a hospital where they sterilize their scalpels and stuff and uh, humidify the, the surgery rooms with the steam. Uh, a lot of heating, too. Nick, did you know that Iceland runs pretty much on steam? Like, they have so much water that uh, all of their power pretty much comes from water ah. and turning it to steam. I did not know that. It's where the steampunk movement came from. Everyone in Iceland has those weird top hats with gadgets. Yes, of course they do. So, Nick, do you have a um, a character for us? You need to come up with the character and describe what they look like and who would play them in an animated film. If we think the character has legs, we can greenlight the franchise. Okay. So I think my character is called the Low Rock, and uh, they speak for the rocks. The rocks need a voice. Okay. And we do need a, a, a... physical description and who would play them in the animated film. Probably like Frosty the Snowman, but made out of rocks. So like okay, three rocks stacked yeah. on top of each other. Yeah. I like that. I'm not sure who would play them. I guess who would voice them, right? Or yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe maybe Danny DeVito, perhaps. Wait, do you think it's Danny DeVito? Yeah, okay. it might be. Well, Manolo, do you think this has legs? I think so. Nick, you're getting a custom magnet. 
Okay. Oh, this awesome. Thank you. Really big. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Really nice work. Talk to you soon. Okay. That was riveting. Okay. So let's talk to someone else. We're going to talk to, let's see, we got Sam in Wooddale. No, Chicago. Sam, are you in Chicago or Wooddale? Where are you, Sam? Okay. I am in Wooddale, but I thought Chicago would be easier because I'm just outside Chicago. So, okay. yes. Okay. Just outside <laughs> Chicago. Great. That's yes. one of those. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> What's a scenic charge artist? That's what you are. I am the head of the paint department at a large theater in Chicago. What show, what show are you working on right now? Right now, we're working on a show called Penelope Ad. Good paint show? It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. Wow. I love my job. <laughs> so you're in show business, Sam. I, I feel like you could do this. You got a Lorex character for us. I think we're going to go with the... Uh, Polorax, who speaks for the flowers, well, like the pollen Polorax. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Uh... And I imagine her being just a tiny little thing, but all of these just stunning colors. Imagine like a, a Joseph's amazing Technicolor dream coat kind of look. She's very fuzzy, multicolored, beautiful splotches everywhere. Splot, splot. Yeah, but I imagine it being played by the woman from Big Bang Theory, the wife with the tiny voice. <laughs> um, the one who's at night court? Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> you know your Big Bang Theory. See, like if I was an exec or whatever, or person of the Dr. Seuss estate, it's like, why wouldn't you branch out with these things, you know? Well, there we go. So you'd buy it? You'd buy I, a franchise? I would totally buy it. We're going to make some Dr. Seuss money. Sam, you're going to bust a magnet. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Yay! Really good. Really powerful stuff. This next game is called Backronym for to the Future. Submitted by Carol Iskowich from Los Angeles, California. Backronym to the Future. All right. This one's a scat one, Kyle. All right, I'm ready. I don't know jazz. Let's see this. So. Enough disclaimers. There we go. <laughs> Back to the future. Yeah. Really good. Love that you're outside in public. Love. I think someone almost threw a penny at me. Good. Well, I hope you make some money this episode. Okay, so this is backronym to the future. This is what Carol writes. A backronym is an acronym deliberately formed to spell out a particular word. In this game, Joe names a word that is climate change relevant, and a player then uses the letters of the word to create a backronym for the climate change solution. For example, if Joe says car, then the player could say consider a ride, meaning think about carpooling with another person. Manolo judges whether it's a real solution or whether the backronym is close enough to making sense. Uh, there is no score. So basically, Carol's like, you got to judge if it's a solution and whether it's close enough to make sense, then, okay, then we'll give it to you. Then you used your brain. Mm-hmm. Is, I know Carol from growing up, if you can believe it. Wow. I, I used to be her babysitter. You're a lot of people's babysitters. Well, you got to make money. You know what I mean? Yeah. Can you, I was, they gave me, started giving me babysitting jobs when I was 10 years old. That's weird. I would never give a 10-year-old did, children. Did you have a babysitter on top of the, like a supervisor? No, I'd lose children all the time. Lose them. You need to air tag them. I wish that technology existed. Okay, back for him to the future. Let's talk to Alexander. Alexander, where are you coming from? Hey, I'm in Chicago. What? Like many other people today. Wow. What do you do in Chicago? I'm a photographer and art director. Alexander, yeah. I have to bring something up. What's that? So earlier, you were making a lot of hand gestures, and I thought you were just being a very uh, uh, attentive and participant person to the actual show mm. but you were I imagine were just interacting with Alex's daughter yeah I, I was saying hi to the, uh, the that's the, what the it was yeah I was like man I like this Alexander but yeah just yeah. hanging out hello yeah no, no 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 it wasn't about the show at all sorry well that's Dr. Game well, Show um Alexander we don't know any you did not tell our producer anything your mystery. Yeah, yeah, I I like to live live that way. Uh, very. You want to tell us anything about yourself? What's what? Is, what if I love cooking. Um, okay. So yeah. 
Alexander, what do you think of uh, Manolo's long diatribe about cooking chicken with uh, climate change? I mean, it depends where the chicken came from, I guess. <laughs> I should probably eat local, you know? Eat local. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I found it in the sewer. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Okay, so Alexander, I'm going to give you a, a word. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have to come up with a backronym for it. You yeah. ready for that? Not even, but yeah, let's go. Water. Uh, w. Yeah. Where are and, the... Uh, yeah. Where are the... Yeah. Where, where are the E? Where are the elephants? What? About water? Reading? That has nothing to do with water. I've helped. Where are the elephants reading? That's not even... Where are they getting their climate information? Yeah. Where are the elephants reading? This is your final answer. Yes. Right. <laughs> well, Manola, you have to judge whether it's a real solution. <laughs> and I guess I'll judge. I would just like to. Like, yeah. Okay. We, there's a political party's uh, particular mascot. Oh, my right? God. So, Alexander. Think about that. Right. Oh, Talk oof. about where people are getting their news sources from. Whoa. And- how much fresh water is still available, right? You just went from confusing my brain to exploding it with a That was beautiful. Yeah. yeah. That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Manolo? Do you think it's a real solution? Or do you th- and you and I'll go ahead and say, you know, would that save? I think it makes sense. But do you think it's a real solution, Manolo? I think the first step for coming up with a solution is to ask a question and go on from there. So I'm and? Gonna- I'm going to go with it. I'm going to green light it. Oh, you're getting the custom bank. You're getting it. You're getting it. That's good. I've I've been waiting for this for at least (laughs) three years. Well, well, that, you know, it's come to you. It is, Mm -hmm. it's arrived. Congratulations. Thank you. And take care to you. Okay. Talk to you soon. Okay. Wow. That was really riveting. Can we do it again with Joan? Joan in Portland. Joan, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Joan. What's going on? Nothing. Come on, Joan. I'm nervous. Why? Oh, it's okay. Because I have to use my brain and make it be smart. Isn't that the worst? Remember when we did Where are the Elephants Reading? <laughs> yeah, and that was really good. I never could have come up but with that. But not at first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Joan, if at first you don't succeed, just keep talking. Okay. Tell us about this drum pad. It's like a drum pad with some kind of recycled material on top that reminds me of a track and field track. So it's like an upcycled material drum pad that I can practice my paradiddles on. Paradiddles. What's a paradiddle? A paradiddle is a drumming rudiment and it's a pattern of beats. So you go paradiddle, paradiddle. It sounds like the word paradiddle. Paradiddle. Ba-ba-ba-ba. It sounds like that. I got it. Okay, so Joan, and the word I'm going to give you is leaf. Let's eat a food. (laughs) And this is about eating your food. And then after you eat your food, you reduce the food waste. Okay. By eating all the food. Just keep continuing eating. Yeah. That was pretty good. What do you think, Manolo? Do you think it... um... Yeah, I think that's a solution. That's what I do. Okay. And I'll say pretty much makes sense. So, Joan, no need to worry. Let's eat a food. You got it. Yay. Congrats. Do you want to play the drum? Give us one paradiddle? This is what upcycled jazz sounds like. Can you even hear it? Try it now. Oh, probably not. No. Isn't that amazing? I, it was really good. So. There's, and there's no judgment because we can't even hear it. I'll uh, add some drum licks over it. Wow, Joan, great job. Really. Thank powerful. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that was Backroom to the Future. We're going to play one more game. Kyle, any genre you want for the theme song. Let, let's do a little lullaby. Okay, this is a little bit tricky, but okay, here's the game. The game is called The Ice We Skate Is Getting Pretty Thin. The water's getting warm, so you might as well swim. Submitted by Kai McKenna and Max Schilling from Nova Scotia, Canada. Take it away. The ice we skate is getting then the water's getting warm so you might as well swim Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. wait alex 
Sandy said it was sad. This is why you can't look at the chat. That feels appropriate to the title of this game. So that felt but right. It's just... Is nobody going to go to sleep to that? No, what you got was a lyric. And it was like... And you were like, let me make it the saddest lullaby. <laughs> well, Kyle said lullaby. I don't mean to throw you under the bus. I genuinely think that if you sang that to babies, they would cry. Okay, so... <laughs> Kyle, was that what you had in mind? So many lullabies are terrifying for babies. Like, Rufflebye Baby on the treetop is just as horrifying as Ice Melts. So. Yeah, the next verse was that the baby is in the bottom of the ocean. Well. Think about that. We don't want to. Okay, so here's how this game works. Colors must invent a new mode of travel that can help prevent climate change or people can use to get around in the future. Explain why it's a good way to get around and how it's good for the planet. If Manila would travel this way, he says, hey now, you're a rock star, you win a custom magnet. Example, stroller skates. Like roller skates meets a scooter. Don't need fossil fuels or electricity to get around. Super eco-friendly and very maneuverable. Has a basket for scavenging supplies. Wow. Kyle, do you have any ideas for this? Uh, probably adding more legs. Like big coming mutants or maybe building oh. extra legs or that just strap it on and allows you to move faster whoa okay so you just put us in some kind of margaret atwood world that went really fast to there so thank you <laughs> thank you kyle it was really really helpful start to this game well, let's see we have not yet heard from nate in phoenixville Pennsylvania. Hello, Pennsylvania. Yeah, yay, PA. Yeah, just enjoying the nice weather, you know, the climate. It's nice. In Phoenixville, there's a tradition. Yes. Every July, we all, like, there's local wood places that donate a whole bunch of wood. And then we get, like, local artists to design a big bird. Uh, and then we take all the wood and we build a two-story version of the uh, bird. And then in December, we all set it on fire and watch it. And it's really cool. Wow. How long does this go back to? Uh, I think they've been doing it for 20 years. Pretty cool about Phoenixville. Because I get it. Phoenix. Yeah. You have a husband and two dogs that are somehow quiet during this time yes he's out like running them around our neighborhood to keep them silent <laughs> so otherwise they'd be very loud <laughs> there you go great do you have a mode of transportation you'd like to suggest so i was thinking uh, a very large catapult my idea is the person would just get into the i don't even know what to call it the basket on the catapult then you can have a bunch of people grab onto it and pull it back and just launch them i feel like it's good because you don't need fossil fuels because there's people like pulling on it uh you could probably like create a bunch of like sustainable jobs creating like pillows to catch people on the other end mm -hmm. uh and i think it would be fun just flying through the air like that so the sustainable job is pillows that's perfect <laughs> like sewing the pillows oh sewing the pillows mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense to me okay oh no she's cutting out it made so much sense uh joe is speechless <laughs> yeah. There you go. You know, Nate, I will say, like, having a mode of locomotion that adds to the job market is pretty great. Where, like, with pillows, you can have people gathering, you know, materials to recycle that are soft. So. Oh, yeah. Fast fashion. Do you know a job that would add to the pillows that you probably wouldn't think about? It would be checking for bed bugs. Mm, it's a Thank very you. important job. Thank you for bringing back bed bugs. It's getting worse because of climate change. So, you know, it's, this is a great circular economy you're making there, Nate. Are you serious? They're coming back. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, yes. That and Lyme disease is also like oh. spreading because of climate change. <laughs> this oh, is like a lot of fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks for... <laughs> Did you say thanks for having me? <laughs> I'm, bringing, I'm bringing the energy up. Yeah. <laughs> so I understand bed bugs, I'm guessing, because of the heat. Yeah, so it just allows them to thrive in areas that they normally, you know, wouldn't be. And of course, like humans traveling um, more and more contributes to their range where uh, they, can, they can spread. And then the Lyme disease? The Lyme disease is because um, regions are getting more ideal for their environment and so you're getting them further into areas that would have been wouldn't have been ideal for them so for example this past year they're like further into you know the midwest of the u.s as opposed to being concentrated in certain areas that sort of thing so yeah we're making it really great for insects we don't like but good for them good for <laughs> yeah. them that's really positive i love that 
So look, Nate kind of opened a window and a door here into this uh, thriving bed bug community. <laughs> and it looks like Nate did create sustainable jobs with the pillows. So what do you think, Manolo? Oh, definitely the whole economy. But what do you have to say? Oh, hey, no. You're a rock star. Woo! Really good job, Nate. Really good, passionate performance there. That was really good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. No, thank you. Okay. So, <laughs> Hadley in Evanston, Illinois. Hadley, are you there? Hi. More Chicago. Chicago I trifecta. I'm not, I'm not technically in Chicago, but I'm close enough. Okay, fair I, enough. I try to be real about <laughs> my suburban lifestyle. Okay, your things you told our producer really go from normal to not. Okay, I'll say that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. The first one you say, I once designed one of the custom magnets. Fun. Which one? Interesting. Yeah, proud of that. It's like a an abstract phone. Thank you. Then you say, I thought of a funny game wa- to submit once, but it was too labor intensive, and I thought maybe Joe and Manolo would think it was creepy. What's that? What's that? <laughs> uh, I probably should not have brought that up because uh, I particularly loved the era of the show where Manolo was creating theme songs that didn't really have anything to do with the game. (laughs) And so... (laughs) Wait, what era was that? Yeah, that was an era. They got really abstract for a little while. Um, So I was thinking about cutting audio clips of some of the theme songs and then asking participants to identify what game they were for, but I think maybe would have uh, come off as creepy. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then third thing you say, I still have a baby tooth. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) See, that's the creepy one, I think. Which one? Where is that tooth? In the front? Um, It's like on the side. Are you young, Hadley? I'm 31. Okay. You're, you're it just hanging in there. It's just hanging in there. There's no other tooth. And the, uh, the dentist said that one day it will just fall out. And oh. I'm pretty excited to come up with a creative solution for like what to put there. <laughs> okay. Oh, so like it's going to come out and it's not going to be replaced by like a denture tooth. I mean, it could be. Isn't that adult tooth just waiting? No, so there's what? no adult tooth. I also didn't have wisdom teeth. I've got a like a deficiency of teeth. <laughs> or a perfect amount. Well, Hadley, I guess your intro took more vulnerability than most. <laughs> so do you have an idea for how to get around? I do. And I'm also really excited because I used to have a Smash Mouth themed uh, radio show in college. So this game is really appropriate for me. Can you elaborate on that? Yeah. How do you feel more than an hour? Oh, we would play different songs like by a theme and then I would like break down my analysis of them. Ooh. What was it called? I think it was called All That Glitters. Wow. Oh, great. So my product is called All Star Super Shoes, solar powered shoes that enable you to walk faster and for a longer time. Have you heard of Kyle's idea with more legs? Yeah, if you add more legs on, you'll get there even faster. <laughs> oh, what do you think about this? Hadley has a solar pack. I mean, I, I was just thinking, you know, manually operated multiple legs, which would probably be tiring. Mm-hmm. So this is a better solution than mine. Yeah, I've got your solution. It seems like a great collaboration here. Put those solar shoes on the multiple legs. You got yourself octopus <laughs> style. Really good. Add a catapult to that. Oh my yeah. gosh, you're getting somewhere in no time. Cut uh, cut your commutes down. Podcast is going down the drain. Who needs wormholes? So, what do you think, Manolo? All that glitters is gold. Thank you. <laughs> What's that? Mean? Oh, uh, I'm walking on the sun. No, what is? <laughs> okay, whatever you're doing. Oh, it's what? uh, hey now, you're an all star. Okay, there we go, Hadley. You're getting a custom magnet, perhaps your own. Thank you. Talk to you soon, Hadley. Really good. So we've played three games. We've played the ice we skate is getting pretty thin. The water's getting warm, so you might as well swim. Backronym to the future. And Dr. Lorax cohorts. So usually we vote on a game. But Kyle, because you're our celebrity guest, I'm going to say you should tell us which game you think is the most potent to help. Look, I am still reeling from Alexander's turn there. You know, the power uh-huh. of, of backronyms. I mean, I will remember water forever as where all of the elephants read. And I just, I will critically think about our sources of 
education. So it has staying power. I think I think the winner for this one is going to be backward into the future for me. Wow. wow, Kyle, this is huge for the person I used to babysit who is now an adult. This is really <laughs> huge. I can't believe it. Congrats to Carol. Kyle, we're so glad you were here to join us today. Would you mind? I hate to ask, but would you mind scatting us out? Poop is an essential part of the planet. Um, I am honored to scat you out. That's yeah. where it was going. Okay, here we go. Thank you to everyone who's here. Especially thank you to Kyle in here too. Great. But our thanks to our producer Alex the Dan. Our mixer Andy Christen. The theme song by Big Cute. Special thank you Beth Osnes for inviting us to participate in this event inside the greenhouse at the University of Colorado, an initiative for creative climate communication. And special thanks for support from the Argosy Foundation. You sound just like Beyonce. You really do. Thank you. Okay, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Good work. Bye.